Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. Well, if you have your Bibles, you can turn to Isaiah chapter 59. You know, Laura and I, we don't, uh, on, to be honest, I don't remember the last time Laura and I have ever spoken about what each of us uh, was doing in a particular service. We don't sit down and compare notes. But I was just so touched to hear some of the things that she was kind of releasing and speaking. And um, I feel that uh, some of what the Lord's given me to share uh, would connect right with uh, what Laura was saying. So that's uh, so powerful. Amen. Isaiah chapter 59, uh, maybe an, uh, an odd scripture uh, in, to some uh, for a uh, Christmas uh, service or message, but the Lord kind of laid this on my heart this morning. Amen. And that's Isaiah 59 verse 19. I'm reading from the New King James uh, translation. It says this, <clears throat> everybody say, I'm listening. It says, so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the West and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Amen. Again, so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the West and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy, somebody say enemy, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. Amen. Uh, I preached on this uh, a few times over the years. Uh, I actually looked up, I didn't know what this meant, standard. Everybody say standard. And um, uh, a standard is the, the, basically a thing that would be on a pole if you're going out into uh, a war. Uh, there were different standards on top of the poles, and the, the, the ones that would hold those would lift up the standard, which would indicate to all of the, the, the soldiers or what have you <clears throat> what action was to be taken. Has anybody ever heard that before? Amen. Uh, so this is interesting that in the days uh, that we live in, there's no doubt that uh, evil is uh, prevalent. How many uh, have seen things even in the last number of years that, uh, for me, I didn't think that my children's children would experience? We're seeing things now in this earth uh, in which we live, evil that's not necessarily unprecedented, but it's unprecedented to us in our generation. Amen. We, we've come a long way in the last, uh, uh, let's say, 100 years, have we not? Uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, I remember growing up as a kid, uh, they, I remember someone referring to a, an older classic movie, uh, and they said it had a, uh, the first movie that had a curse word in it. And I thought, good Lord, we've come a long way since those days, haven't we? Right? Uh, so evil is prevalent, and it has come in like a flood. Everybody say, like a flood. Right? Evil has come in like a flood. If you haven't seen that, then you're not, you're not looking because it's happened, right? It's happened on our watch. Evil has come in like a flood, but, everybody say but. But, thank God we have God's word, amen? And what does God's word say? Well, it says when, uh, when the enemy comes in like a flood, amen, that the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. So the spirit of the Lord is, is lifting up that standard as is to say, this is what my plan is. This is what I have to say uh, in these days. This is what I, I mean, oh, God always has an answer uh, to what's going on in the world. Is anybody here? Hello? God always has an answer. Amen. That's the standard. That's the answer. Now, uh, in, in the days that we live in, obviously, I remember uh, uh, hearing uh, uh, just several ministers, but the one that I can hear her voice right now is Lois Toucher from Shekinah Glory. Uh, and she said that in these last days, basically, that this, these are the days or this is the age of the church. Everybody say the church. Amen. Somebody say the church. This is the, that is the standard. Amen. What do you mean, Pastor Jen? That is God's answer to the flood of evil that is ongoing in our world right now. 
Amen. What do you mean by that? I, I mean that God's answer to the evil that it seems to be prevailing in the earth today, God's answer to that is the church. Well, what is the church? Well, the church are, 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 is a body of believers that of those that have been called out of darkness and into the light of, of Jesus. Amen. Isn't that what we're celebrating in this season? Amen. Isn't Jesus the reason for the season? Glory to God. Well, the, the, his body, the church, are members of him. Which means this, Paul said that my body, your body, if you're a born-again believer, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, uh, the apostle Paul again by the Holy Spirit said, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Somebody say new. A uh, new creature. What does that mean? Well, it goes on to say that old things pass away and everything has become new. Amen. Somebody say all things. Okay. Well, is, is anybody here today? Okay. So all things have, uh, old things have passed away, all things have become new. So now you and I are joined to Christ. Amen. Somebody say, Christ is in me. Amen. What, what does that mean? You've been baptized into him. That means you and him are one now. You're not just uh, uh, Mary Brown or, or whoever. Uh, you're in Christ. That means his nature is now in you. Amen. Glory to God. Let's quickly look at uh, Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Amen. So, so what is our answer here? What, what, what is, how do we enter into and actually become or heed the, 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 the call of the standard that's been raised? Somebody say the standard. How do we follow that standard? If, if, the, if the Spirit of the Lord is lifting it up and saying, this is what we're to do, then as members of the body of Christ, we are to look at that standard and say, this is what we're supposed to do right now. Amen. So here's another little step in the progression of how do we follow this? How do we do this? Amen. How do, how do we, how do we uh, walk in the light of what the Holy Spirit's saying? Well, here's one uh, thing in Romans 12, verse 2. Uh, in the New King James, it says, and do not be conformed. Somebody say, do not. Oh, Pastor Darren, you're just, uh, you're just preaching. You know, you're just, uh, you know, trying to get everybody to, you know, to do something. No, I, I, that's not really my objective. My objective is that we hear in these last days. Somebody say, last days. That you and I hear in these last days what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to what? The church. Amen. Somebody say this with me. Say, the Spirit of the Lord is speaking right now. Amen. Somebody say it like this. Say, the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to me right now. Amen. Well, what is the Spirit of the Lord saying? Well, he's saying right here in this verse, do not, do not be conformed to this world. Amen. That's, that's part one of this verse. Do not, say it again, do not. It says, do not be conformed to this world. I think one translation says, don't pattern your lives uh, after the customs or whatever, uh, the ways of this current uh, world system. Don't model your lives after the system or the things of this world. Amen. So do not conform. Do not model your life after the system of the world. But it says, really, what we're called to do is, is to be what? Transformed. Everybody say transformed. Amen. Y'all here? You done gone home. Amen. Somebody say transformed. Hallelujah. Boy, it's interesting how the devil hopped on that word these last few years, isn't it? Now, we're looking, we're looking for transformation, just not the kind that the world's looking for. Is, hello? Hello? No, we need to be transformed. We need to be transformed, Right? So here's, there's two things happening here. We're either, number one, we're going to do one of two things. We're either going to conform to the world, 
which means our lives are going to be patterned after the world system, number one. Or, number two, we can actually be changed. That's what we, that's what we said last week. We can be changed. It, it does not yet appear what we shall be or what we can be. We can be changed. Somebody turn to your neighbor and say, you can be changed, especially if it's your spouse. Tell them. Tell them with some authority. You can be changed. Laura, Laura, you need to change. Now me, I've already arrived. I'm already there. La oh, I heard some laughing somewhere over there. That's funny, isn't it? Oh. Amen. We can change. We can change, can't we? Amen. And that's what the Lord's saying. We need to be transformed. Turn to your other neighbor and say, don't stay the same. Just don't do it. It's not worth it. You can change, and God wants you to change, right? He doesn't love you any less or more if you change or don't change, no. But he wants you to change and to grow into who he's called you to be. That's what transfer. What does a transformed life look like? A, a transformed life looks like a, a someone, a believer, a Christian person who acts and thinks like God does. That's what a transformed person is. Amen. Now, uh, in, in 1981... God sent uh, Bob Champion here uh, to start this church. Amen. We've been here for years, rocking our peers. We've been, don't, we've been here. We've just been here, right? Bob Champion, on assignment, started this church in 1981, and what the Spirit of the Lord put in his heart was to go to Live Oak, Florida, and to start a family church, Amen. Everybody say family church. He said, go to Live Oak, Florida, start a family church, start a teaching center. Everything in the 1970s and 80s was a center, but I think there's a significance in that. He said, start a family church, a teaching center, and a world outreach center. Amen. That's what God told Bob Champion, the, the founder of this church, 1981 start a family church, a teaching center, and a world outreach center. Amen. And, you know, we've been, I believe, fulfilling that vision. Those that, you know, Pastor Bob and Carol Champion, you know, they did their part. Pastor Frank and uh, Amanda, you know, they carried the torch and did their part and are still serving faithfully here in this local church and ministry. Amen. Laura and I stepped in in 2012. Uh, from youth pastoring, and we got demoted to senior pastors. That's a joke. And we've been doing our part all these years, right? But how many, how many believe that God has a plan? Amen. That, that I believe our best days are still ahead. Can I prophesy over you this morning? Amen. That as we head into this new, this new year, amen, 2024, that our Vision will become even clearer. Amen. Your part. Glory to God as you step into what the Lord has for you, that, there, that you will be stepping into a season of tremendous fulfillment. Amen. Realization of what the word of the Lord is to you and to your home. Amen. Laura said it earlier. Some of us have, uh, we've been, we've planted our feet and we have believed God in these uh, times of, of, of challenge, amen? And I believe that as we're moving forward into this next season of ministry, not just for this, this church here, but the body of Christ, that we are stepping into a time of tremendous fulfillment, amen? Somebody needs to write it down. You need to mark it down. You're stepping into a season of fulfillment and realization. Glory to God. Where those long time promises that you have stood on and have believed for, the word of the Lord that came unto you, amen. Those words, even in the night uh, see, the, the, the night times where you've gotten up and the, the spirit of God was speaking to you, amen. This, as we move forward, is the time where those excuse me, long time words are being fulfilled. And not just being fulfilled in a small manner, but being fulfilled 
in an overwhelming manner. Amen. Is anybody here? The, wor the, the Lord is fulfilling his word. Amen. So the family church and teaching center and world outreach center. Amen. We're stepping, it, uh, stepping into a, a greater degree of that, uh, that anointing and that mandate and that mission. But I want to uh, just focus on one, one quick part. Amen. Uh, of that, uh, that vision and that being a family church. Uh, if you have your Bibles, you could turn quickly to Joshua 24. Uh, amen. This is my last uh, verse in, in this part of the service here. Joshua chapter 24. Maybe this is a familiar, at least one of the verses here uh, would be familiar to some of us. Uh, but I, I want to focus on this just for a moment because I believe the Spirit of the Lord wants to say something and do something uh, in, the, in the next few moments that we have together. Amen. Uh, Joshua 24, verse, starting in verse 14, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says this, it says, so fear the Lord and serve him wholeheartedly. Everybody say, I'm listening. Amen. Now, I want you to hear this. Don't miss this next part, okay? So fear the Lord and serve him wholeheartedly. So fear the Lord and serve him wholeheartedly. Somebody say, wholeheartedly. It says, put away uh, forever the idols your ancestors worshipped when they lived beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt. It says, serve the Lord alone. Amen. Can you see those words up there? Serve the Lord alone. But if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today who you will serve. Amen. Amen. Would you prefer the gods of your ancestors, uh, the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates, or will it be the god, uh, gods of the Amorites in whose land you now live? I love this, what Joshua says. He says, but, <laughs> glory to God, but as for me, <laughs> can, I, can I make an announcement this morning? Huh? Can I, make, can I make an announcement this morning? But I'm going to say what Joshua said. But as for me, see, this is what this comes down to. Bob Champion started a family church here. He started an equipping center, and he started a world outreach center right here in Live Oak, Florida. And our best days are ahead of us. But where it boils down for you and I is this simple statement here, what Joshua said. We all have a choice. We have a choice whether to serve this world system or we have a choice of whether we can serve the Lord. Amen. And Joshua nailed it here in the spirit of the Lord speaking this right now this morning. This choice comes down to individual families. That, that's what the spirit of the Lord is saying right now. This is a family church. Amen. What will happen to your family as you join? Oh, help me preach this morning. What will happen to your family as you join yourself to the plan of God? What will happen to your uh, your family. Well, uh, you know, I'm standing up here. Yes, I'm a pastor. Yes, I function, uh, you know, in, 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 in the anointing that God gives me to function. But let me tell you, when I leave this, this, this pulpit and this stage, uh, a lot of the times, you know what I'm functioning as? Just a Christian. I'm just a believer. I got to use the same faith that you got to use. I got to lay hands on my own body when sickness comes against my body. I got to believe God for my finances when they uh, uh, when I'm in need of uh, increase or or whatever the case is. I've got to believe God as a Christian just like you do. Amen. And you know what? It's the local church, the the plan of God for you and your family is here. Amen. What do you mean by that? I mean you need to be planted in the house that God calls you to. Why? Because it's going to equip you to do your part in the plan of God. Is anybody here? Yes. Glory to God. Somebody say, I'm listening. Hallelujah. So it says, for, but as for me and my house. Amen. Come on. I, I want every, uh, well, well, well let's, let, let's do this. Uh, uh, 
I, I want if, if you're a, uh, this shouldn't be that confusing, right? If you're a man in this room and you're the head of a household, I want you to stand up on your feet right now, quickly. Be surprised uh, how many contexts you might ask that question. You don't know what kind of an answer you're going to get. You're, you're the head of a household. I want you to think about this, man, this morning. And, and some of you, you wives and family members, you need to pray for, your, for the men in your home because there's an anointing in this earth right now. And there always has been. And the enemy will fight it with everything he's got. We need men in this day that will stand up and say those words that Joshua said. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Come on, man. Why don't you say that out loud? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Say it again. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Hallelujah. You may be seated. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. What does that mean? We're going to put God first. We're not going to put other worldly endeavors or objectives ahead of what God has for us. No, we're going to put God first. Amen. I mean, no, that's a big deal. And like Laura said earlier, as we do this, amen. You can come on up, Travis. As we do this, as we put God first, amen, we're guaranteed. Amen. I, I love that, uh, that pr prophetic word, you know, uh, uh, God's on my side. The blood has been applied. God's on my side. I cannot be denied. Every need shall be supplied, you know. As we put God first, amen, as we put our family in the path of what the Lord's doing in these last days, that's what this, this, this place is about. It's about your families being built on the foundation of God's word. Because listen, folks, let me tell you, and men, you need to hear this. The, the, the word of the Lord that's come forth multiple times, over the last number of years, I've heard it nationally, globally. I've heard it in my own spirit. I've heard different ministers here and in, in different places say the same thing. Amen. Multiple times confirmed over and over and over again. And, and that word is that there is a shaking that's coming to this earth. There is a shaking. It's in, even in Hebrews it says uh, there's, there's coming a day where everything that can be shaken will be shaken. And then it says in the context of that verse that those of us that have grabbed a hold to the kingdom of God, which cannot be shaken, everything else will be shaken, but the kingdom of God will not be shaken. Hallelujah. Which is to say this, men, that as you put your family in the place where God has called them and make that a priority, make it the main thing, then you have just put your family in a place where they cannot be shaken, where they can't, if you put them in the place where you are called and assigned and doing your part in the kingdom. If you do that, you will not be shaken. But if you don't do that, and I believe that, that, that the Lord is going to hold men accountable for this. Uh, uh, heads of households, you're going to be held accountable for this. Did you put your family in a place where they could follow what the Lord had for them? That's, that's, I'm telling you, that's what the Spirit of God is saying. We've got to declare with our mouth, as for me and my house, amen, we will serve the Lord. Now, how many received that this morning? Amen. Well,